Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, by the way, we are uploading a video today on Patreon. I am going to be talking about Planet X once again. Uh, some information coming out that this thing is getting closer. And of course, all the havoc that we're seeing on the Earth does seem to indicate that very thing. But listen, right now, this is uh, September the 20th, 2024. Uh, Israel overnight has struck inside of Lebanon, uh, and over 1,000 strikes have been done. going to play this for you here in just a second. Going back, though, real quick to the Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live. Be sure to subscribe. Uh, the description will, or in the description below will be the link for that Uh that page there. Anyway, let's get right into this here about what's going on there. Hours of heavy bombing in southern Lebanon. The Israeli army says it struck roughly 100 rocket launchers and 1,000 barrels, quote, ready to be used. Yet on Friday morning, sirens wailed again on the Israeli side of the border. Hezbollah is believed to have some 150,000 rockets and missiles. And it says it will maintain pressure on Israel as long as it continues its war in Gaza. Iran can send Hezbollah as many weapons as needed. Hezbollah has access to a whole panel of weapons it did not have in the last war with Israel in 2006. After the mass attack on Hezbollah's communication devices attributed to Israel, which has not claimed responsibility for it, countries, including Israel's allies, have urged all parties to de-escalate. I can imagine only de-escalation, but I'm sure that there are a lot of other countries now checking their own devices. Uh, Ron Gunter, uh, and I need to have Ron on before too long, to discuss this. I asked Ron about the pager device and we actually spoke about that. One of the first ones probably to break that story that it was explosive devices in the pager because he explained it to me privately. There's just no way that could happen. Ron is an engineer uh, that was in the military, designed some very uh, sophisticated things for the military over the years there. So he, I knew that he would understand this better than anyone. Uh, but nonetheless, what, what's interesting too, though, is that Israel and Hezbollah, according to an Arabic news source that I caught this morning, couldn't find it when I, before I went on the news here, were discussing how that Israel and Hezbollah both have really maintained hitting military targets rather than civilian targets thus far in this war. I thought that was interest, interesting, especially in light of Candace Owen over here on Piers Morgan, uh, and their broadcast, uh, I think that aired uh, either yesterday or t today, one very interesting uh, Israeli diplomat is on here, uh, Candace Pierce Morgan, and I know this guy here, but I can't think of his name right off the top of my head there. But listen to what Candace Owens has to say in this very uh, eye-opening comment about Gaza and, of course, Israel's capability. Well, I think a question that I immediately want to ask him, and I'm grateful to have the opportunity to, is that if you're able to delineate how surgical and precise these operations can be with the intelligence that you have, why are there 40,000 dead, innocent women and children and civilians in Gaza? I, because that's a question that I've always had. You know, you, you, we keep hearing the excuse that behind every one of these victims is a Hamas soldier, but there's not 40,000 dead Hamas soldiers. And if the excuse is that there's a tunnel under there, I mean, just me thinking logically through engineering, you would only have to hit a tunnel at a couple of points to render it ineffective. So I'm just interested in why you guys can perform surgical procedures, but seemingly not in Gaza, where it looks like just an absolute war zone and buildings and hospitals and children and women are dead. Well, on that yeah. point, let's get a response from Jonathan. It's a, fair, it's a fair question. It's a, it's a very fair question. And before Jonathan answers, I just want to remind you, Jonathan is the guy that I actually showed you early on in this war here when he goes into a hospital. Uh, clearly, the evidence showed that they staged everything there, uh, like, for example, the rifles in behind the MRI machine there, uh, that they were hiding it, using it for that purpose. You know, this is a magnetic resonant uh, machine, highly magnetized. If you turn the thing on, these guns were just all stick right to it. You don't have metal 
inside an MRI uh, room there like that. Uh, grenades would be going off everywhere once these things started flying around the room. So it's kind of really um, uh, ridiculous, not to mention the other things we saw, the, all the different fake clips that they put out. So Jonathan, go right ahead and answer Candace. Question, and I appreciate it. And I'd like to make a comparison. Uh, I'm sure that you know, you follow events uh, and you're very interested in what happens in Israel and with what our enemies are doing, and I see that. But I'm sure that you you know that until this uh, cyber operation that Israel reportedly did, Israel was able to kill more than 500 Hezbollah operatives in Lebanon, throughout Lebanon. Now, I haven't seen you tweet about it or any of the other people who usually support the other side. But if you take a look at how many civilians were killed in Lebanon as a result, as an unfortunate byproduct of Israeli strikes, and if you compare that to uh, the situation in Gaza, I think that what you will find is it's the same IDF, the same operating procedures that we have in Gaza, only that here in Lebanon until now, the situation is that Hezbollah has so far distinguished itself from civilian population and they haven't been fighting from within cities. And as such, when the IDF has deployed lethal weapons against them, then terrorists have been killed and not civilians. And it's not because it's a different IDF, it's because, as you said, you used the word excuses, I would call it a reason and the sad reality of Hamas using Gazan population as their human shields, which I think is deplorable. And if you claim to be a defender of Palestinians and Arabs and other people, and you have that in your heart, and I think that your criticism should be pointed first and foremost towards Hamas and all of the other cowards who are using Palestinians as their human shields, who are afraid to fight out in the open, who are firing rockets from schools and who are using mosques as their launch pads against Israel, that I think is despicable and that should be condemned. Not the fact that we are going in there to fight them after they attacked us on October the 7th, I, I but didn't, by I all didn't means. Issue a condemnation. I, I didn't issue a condemnation. I asked you a question and you just delivered me the same talking points that we always hear. And you didn't actually provide me an answer. I actually if did. You are I gave able you an to go to a foreign country. You guys have ha you have control over the Gaza Strip, right? It's it's no. a part of Israel. No, it if isn't. If you are no. able to go into a country like Lebanon, where, where you don't have control, where you can't just shut off their water, where you can't be monitoring people's actions in the same way, and within the same proximity to Israel, why are you unable to simil similarly perform a surgical operation to locate where exactly those Hamas soldiers are? And by the way, do you have a number for how many Hamas soldiers have been killed in the Gaza Strip? Right. So, I mean, you either weren't listening and or maybe I wasn't clear. How many clear. Hamas soldiers yeah. have been killed? Yeah, I, I heard that. You know, this is the problem with uh, Jonathan. He is very much known for going in and clearly uh, giving some kind of elaborate story to cover up the crimes that Israel is committing. And let's face it, when he says Hamas is hiding in the cities, Gaza is nothing but one gigantic city. Where are they going to hide except inside of a city? And yes, as I said from the very beginning of this, October the 7th was a heinous crime that happened against the Israeli people. But those that were behind the organization of this attack also include people very high up in the government. They knew about the attack weeks before it ever happened. They even knew how many hostages that were going to be taken. I had heard about it a year in advance. I just didn't know that it was Israel where it was going to happen, but I was told that it was going to happen. So I find this absurd, his responses, but no doubt the same. Like she pointed out, like Candace pointed out, Lebanon, you don't have the power to go cut off their water. Israel controls everything in and out of Gaza. Everything. They control the border. They control the water. They control the food. They control everything. They even control the money that goes in there. Netanyahu said in order to keep from having a PLO, we must have Hamas 2018 before the Knesset. He was pushing to continue to fund them. Netanyahu funded the attack that happened on October the 7th. That's flat out the way it is. 
if you wanted to go in there and root out Hamas, do a ground invasion. You don't have to blow up everyone's homes and then move people from one end to the other of the place constantly only to bomb them as soon as they get to the other side. You're intentionally engaging in a war to drive these people out of the land. Face it, it's a fact. Everyone knows it. Where the guilt comes in is when Christians support this type of terrorism in the name of Christianity when Jesus Christ came to fulfill the very covenant of Abraham and he became the curse that hung on the tree in order to lift the curse on the Gentile people. That as the scripture promised that Abraham would be a blessing to all the nations of the earth. 2,000 years ago, that curse was lifted. You have no right to go in there and indiscriminately just kill civilians by the tens of thousands. That's my point. And anyone that does not recognize the blood of Jesus Christ, it's deplorable to say the least there. Uh, this here on France 24 talk about the pager system. I just want to quickly play this. This was really in line with what Ron shared with me as well. Listen Scale. to this. But were they unprecedented in how they used technology? Not really. For all the, from all the reporting we've seen, it's clear that some sort of plastic explosive was put inside these devices and triggered by a detonator, which itself was triggered when these devices were sent a certain signal. So this is nothing new. In fact, Israel itself has been accused of carrying out this type of attack, although on a much smaller scale, for decades. You only have to look at Yahya Ayash, who in 1996 um, was in Gaza, who's Hamas's chief bomb on engineer. He answered a rigged mobile phone, which, which exploded, and that's how he was killed. So, as you say, yes, we've seen it before, but never on this scale, never such a mass explosion of devices all at once, um, having gone undetected for so long. Now, My thought on this also is that undoubtedly through Israeli intelligence and the monitoring of Hezbollah, they knew that the Hezbollah was planning on changing, and this could have been years ago, their way of communications. They knew that this was going to happen. Uh, so when they got wind of that, they were able to intercept that shipment of pagers that were going to go to the Hezbollah commanders and then rig them with these explosives. As Ron said uh, in the private conversation that we had, a diode would have been placed inside of there as well. And he even mentioned to me the word plastic explosives. He said a very small, tiny bit is all you would need. And he said, and then when they go to send that certain signal that would go to all those phones that would be programmed to be able to do that, he said you could also add a diode. He said a diode is like a little timer, a little tiny dot that would almost be added to the pager. That would allow it a delayed reaction of about 5-10 seconds. He said a long enough for the person to grab it, pull it to their face to see who was calling, what the message was. Some cases people don't answer them, so they went off, they exploded near the kidneys. They knew that this would happen. Hands were blown off. I saw one particular image where a man's, all of his fingers were gone, uh, mangled, just, just hanging there. Horrible, horrible scene there. And, and sadly, there are people out there that are cheering Israel on. Oh, you've become so creative in your way to defeat your enemy. And again, I say to you, and, and I only I plead with you to consider what Jesus did. He didn't just do it for you. He did it for these people as well. He paved that way so that that... Go, go and listen to this message I just did, Breaking the Curse. That, that message is so important. I'll put the link in the description just to help you find that as well. Uh, but anyway, my heart is troubled greatly. And I do not condone the atrocities uh, either of, of Palestinians or Hezbollah or Iranians or anybody else that are attacking the innocent uh, Israelis. But you have to understand too what these Palestinians have gone through in the West Bank and Gaza. It is a crime that 
how could the world allow this to go on all these years? You know, I mean, the only president we have ever had that had a heart for the Palestinian people was Jimmy Carter. I believe that's why God has allowed that man to live so many years like he has. President Jimmy Carter. I'll never forget when I was just a kid, my Aunt Vera, my great-grandmother's sister, had sent when he became president, uh, I guess she was from very old school Baptist say she I remember her wearing bonnets and she made them herself and sent them to Jimmy Carter for his wife and daughter and they sent her a little thank you note back you know for doing that but my point is that's the only president this country's ever had that cared about these people and even to modern days here he still has visited with them trying to help them for their independence. God bless that man. You know, you may not agree with him in politics, but God bless that man. At least he knew, as a Christian, he knew that the blood of Jesus Christ mattered for those people. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. In a world where you don't need biased media, you need the truth, and that's what we're here for. Good day.